In this episode, I will show you how you can incorporate Docker in your daily routine as a Node.js developer. If you haven't used Docker so far and want to get familiar with its capabilities, this video is for you. First, as a warm-up, we will launch a Docker container with MongoDB. After that, we will use Docker Compose to do the same thing. Next, we will add to our application stack a second container with a Node.js application. It is not all of it. In the next video, I will fully dockerize a Node.js application by creating a custom Docker image. So let's start. We will use the app from a previous episode. Take a look at the application code again. We see that it connects to MongoDB and it has one mongoose model, the user. Then there are three routes. One of them returns the last 10 users and another saves new users in the database. And there is a run method which connects to MongoDB and launches the application. Let's say that I want to run the app but I don't have MongoDB installed on my Mac. And there is an error. Let's fix this problem with Docker. You can think of a Docker as a program which allows you to run the applications installed on another virtual operating systems inside your computer. How it can help us? We can run Linux machine with pre-installed MongoDB and all its dependencies with no effort at all. But first things first, we have to install Docker. We can download it from the Docker website. In my case, it is Docker desktop app for Mac. In order to download the app, you first have to register. To speed up a little bit, I already installed a Docker. It appears in my top bar. And you can see that I have a new command in my terminal. We will use docker run command. We have to specify a docker image, a blueprint based on which docker will create an application. We will use mongo 3.6 image. The first time we run it, docker will download the image. Let's wait a little bit. The output says that mongodb is running on port 27017. Let's try to run our server once again. And there is still an error. Everything because Docker runs applications in totally isolated containers. We have to instruct Docker to open port 27017 in the container. We can do this by exposing ports. We define that port 27017 from the container will be exposed as the port with exactly the same number in our local environment. Let's try to run the server again. The server was connected to the database. Let's create one user via the create endpoint. The user has been created. And then try to return a list of all users. Everything seems to be working. Now, let's stop the server and also stop the docker run command. Then run them both again. Invoke the API endpoint one more time. We can see that there are no users in the database. There are two things I have to explain now. Every time we run docker run command, it creates a new container and each container has its own data, its internal state. We can see all the containers by running docker ps command with the all flag set. Let's remove all containers by using the docker rm command and pass their IDs. So to fix the data problem, we can do a similar thing as we did with the port 27017. We can map the folder inside the container to our local machine. It can be done by using docker volumes. Let's create a local folder for data storage and then mount this folder inside a container as a data db. This is the place where Mongo containers store data. We have to use an absolute path. We will also add the remove flag to the container. It tells Docker to remove the container after stopping. Now we run the server and create a new user, just like before. Stop the server along with the Mongo container and run them both again.
fetch users. Perfect, we have persistent storage. I will show you two more commands which are quite handy when working with Docker containers. First, let's change rm to d, which stands for detached, and give it a name. This will run the container in the background. When we list all the containers, we will see the new one, which is running. Now we can stop and start the container instead of destroying it as we did before. We use docker stop with the name we provided. And it stops the container, so it won't occupy the resources anymore. We can start it by using the docker start command. Ok, so far we've played with our raw docker command. Now let's stop and remove the container we created and move to the next topic. As you can imagine, running these long docker commands is not the most efficient way, especially when we want to run a couple of databases, some RabbitMQ server and a bunch of other services. Fortunately, Docker has a tool called Docker Compose, which automates these tasks. In order to use it, we will have to create a Docker Compose YAML file and rewrite our Docker command there. First, we define which version we will use. Let's use the version number 3, which is the latest. Now, create the first service. Let's translate the Docker command. Define ports. Now define volumes. Now we can use the relative path. And lastly, the image. This is it. To run all the services we defined in the YAML file, we have to run docker compose app command. Reset the server. Ok, we see that the application is working. Let's invoke our API endpoint. And we see that it shares data in the volume we provided. Now we can stop the service and start them again with the same docker compose app command. The last thing I'm going to show you in this video is the easiest way of adding the Node.js container to the list of the services. Why we will need that, you may ask. Let's say we have Node 6 installed locally, but our application uses async await statements, which require later version of Node. So instead of installing different versions in our local environment, we might want to use Docker. How do we do that? Images for the services like Mongo are well defined. We have an image with the Mongo application in particular version, and we know the exact command which runs it. Node.js apps, on the other hand, are different. Each has its own dependencies, different run commands, and different build stages. Most often, you would want to create your own Docker image for your app. I will tell you how to do this in the next episode. But since we have a very simple application, we will use a raw Node.js image. So let's go back to the docker compose yaml file. Create another service. We will name it the app and define the image. We'll use node in version 10. Now we have to specify where in the container we run old commands. It's working directory. Let's use app folder in home directory of node user. We have to specify the user who runs command. Now, just as we did with Mongo, we have to mount our code inside the container. We will synchronize all files and copy them to the app folder. We have to open the port 4040 on which the server will listen. And we also have to specify the command which will run the server. In our case, it will be node server.js. Stop the local server and rerun the Docker Compose app. Similar as before, since this is the first time we launched Node image, it has to be downloaded from the Docker Hub. And we see that our app service has an error connecting with the MongoDB. This is because Docker Compose creates its own inner network. In this network, each container has to be accessed by its name. So we have to change the address of the MongoDB from localhost to Mongo. Because this is the name we specified in Docker Compose YAML file. We can do this by overwriting environmental variable here. We use environment key. 
Another thing is that when we launch Docker Compose containing multiple services, they don't wait for each other. In our case, the app has been started before the Mongo service. To control the startup order, we can use wait for it script. Create the file and paste their code from the library. And then change the run command. Next, we have to add execution rights to the wait for it script. And then let's rerun Docker Compose. We see that wait for it scripts waits for MongoDB. And now, since Mongo is available, it launches the application. The server is listening. Let's fetch users to see if it works. Perfect. This is everything for now. In the next episode, I will tell you how you can create your own Docker images for the application you are developing. Thus, we will fully dockerize your Node.js app. See you next time.